Moving home can be a very costly exercise, especially if you're renting and you need to pay a one-month bond. So what can you do if you've got better things to do with your money? Well, joining me on the show this evening is Michael Wood from Bonshaw. Welcome to the show, Michael. Thanks, Thanks for uh, coming on. So tell us a bit about Bonshaw, how, how Bonshaw works. Right, it works because um, with my background being insurance, I thought um, it would be good if Australian tenants could have better choices when it comes to how to pay for and protect their rental bonds. So what we did was that we came up with a product that allows uh, tenants the option of paying their rental bond by instalments over 6 or 12 months and at the same time helping to protect that bond while it's sitting there with the government at the Rental Bond Board against accidental damage and increased cost of cleaning. Now that's a first for Australia, that's the first time we've had a rental bond insurance product. Uh, now what my thinking was, was that if you've got a good uh, credit rating, um, you might still go and buy your car with uh, finance, uh, you might still buy a TV or a kitchen item of equipment um, with finance, uh, but why not rental bonds? It's been a long time where everyone just has to pay up front. Uh, with no other options. Uh, so what we've come up with is we think uh, something that allows someone with a good credit rating just the choice of not having to pay it up front. So if we took an example, uh, let's say we've got a couple looking for a unit in Parramatta in Sydney. So they might say, well, we've got a good credit rating. Um, why do we have to pay that $2,000 up front? Why don't we spend that on that new lounge suite that we want? So they might say, well, OK. Also, remember the time that we rented last time? We didn't get all of our bond back. Uh, yeah, why don't we take up the Bonshaw insurance as well? Now, all that's needed is that they go on to the Bonshaw website, bonshaw.com.au. They answer some questions. They get pre-approved. Uh, and then what happens is we pay the bond for them. We pay it to the estate agent or pay it direct to the government. And then at the end, uh, end of that process, they start paying us. Up front, there's an initial uh, fee, and then they pay monthly or fortnightly if they choose through that six or 12 month period. And then at the end of that, when there's the property inspection, if there's no accidental damage or increased cost of cleaning or any other claim by the landlord, then they get the whole uh, bond back. If they've taken up the insurance and there is some damage, then the, the insurance steps in and pays uh, above an insurance exit. And we've been absolutely tickled pink by the uh, response we've had. Obviously, it's resonating with a lot of renters because we've had thousands of applicants in, 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 per month. Yeah. Because I guess if you're a young person and you're trying to move out of home, we see property prices rising, rents are rising as well. So if you've got a month up front, plus you've got a month's bond... Yes, that's right. ...and then you've got to furnish the property for the first time... Yeah, it's, it's an, it's an expensive lot of money. exercise. I think some people forget that it is. And it's a bit stressful. What we're hoping is that... If anything, we can take some of that stress out of the process. And if we can make renting a little friendlier, uh, then perhaps that's good for the property investors well, as well. I'm a, I'm a renter as well, so I'm, I'm oh, all for really? that. Okay. Yeah. Now, tell us, what is um, bond erosion? And is it a big thing in Australia? Yeah, it is, actually. Certainly according to the research we've done. Uh, we looked at uh, some statistics that the Rental Bond Board in New South Wales produced for 2014-15. And they showed that uh, only 47% of renters in New South Wales for that year got back all of their bond. So that means... So that's what it is, the erosion is not getting your bond back? Yes, that's right. Right. Now, uh, not getting your bond back can be through a number of different factors. It might be that you've not paid your rent. Uh, it might be that you've not paid an electricity bill or water bill or something like that. But also we see a lot of instances where there is bond erosion through just simple accidents, accidental damage, and often at the end of a lease there might be arguments over whether it's damage or cleaning. That's why we cover both, so we don't end up declining indemnity because someone says, someone says oh, no, it's cleaning, not damage. So, yes, we think that the bond insurance um, can really help rent yeah, it there. Big market. So let's go on to some of the costs of it. So say you're, you need a bond insurance for, say, $2,000. Mm -hmm. Roughly, what's that going to cost? Roughly, up front, there'll be uh, a payment for a $2,000 uh, bond over 12 months. There'll be an upfront payment of $175 and then uh, roughly $50 a week. And that will cover the principal that has to be repaid, the interest, uh, and also the insurance premium if that's uh, added in there as well. So it's yeah. almost like a regular loan with a regular insurance payment as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Okay, makes sense. Now, I guess because I'm a landlord as well as a tenant, 
Should I be worried if my tenants can't afford to pay the bond? Does that mean they're going to be fairly dodgy tenants that can't afford the rent after it's interesting. two or three it's months? It's a good question because when uh, I first did a bit of market research, when I came up with the idea, I spoke to some agents and they said, oh, Michael, if they can't... Exactly as you said. But no, when I explained the product, particularly the insurance side, and also, most critically, the fact that we do an online uh, vet of, uh, for creditworthiness, and we, as well as doing the identity check, they said, oh, that's great, actually. Actually, um, I think the two things that um, they really honed in on after that initial scepticism, perhaps, uh, they said, well, actually, the good thing is you're, you're effectively a second set of eyes for us. Our property managers, they're so busy, but you're going in there, you're checking their creditworthiness uh, as well. So, so kind of anything, like a bonsure approved applicant, it might be just what those landlords want. So it could be like the lender's mortgage insurance, effectively. Yeah. They've got a harsher serviceability criteria than quite often the banks. They do, they yeah. do. So um, it gives the bank some, you know, extra comfort. And yeah. here, I think the estate agents will say, "Well, that's great because." Um, whilst we do some checks, they might check that they've got a job. We go further, we do a full credit check. Uh, right. So uh, I think it is an extra set of eyes, I think, is good for property investors, uh, landlords. Yeah. Uh, so in terms of the uh, renters, what, what are the key benefits? Obviously there's that cash flow perspective. Yeah, the cash flow, that's, that's, a, that's a big thing. Uh, as we said, it's a pretty expensive exercise. I think they also like um, the fact that they can uh, have the access to this rental insurance product. Um, there's a certain amount of education we have to do with renters uh, whenever it comes to insurance, but we uh, try and do so through our website. Uh, and the third thing is that it's quite simple, uh, it's fast, uh, process, it's all online. And I think that's great for both the renters and the estate agents, because the estate agents don't have to do anything really. So uh, apart from check that the property details are correct, um, the bond goes into their account. And so, as a property investor, should I be ideally wanting one of these? So what are the benefits if someone does come with a bond? And actually, would I even know if it's paid through you or direct anyway? No, no. Normally, uh, it's through the estate agent. So uh, the estate agent always says, can't hand over those keys till we have the bond. So you go online, we then send the money straight through to the estate agent's trust account. That's the only thing we need from the uh, estate agent is their trust account. In fact, in New South Wales, we send it straight through to the government under their new system. Right, but okay. in other states, uh, we do need the trust account details. Yeah. So, yeah, but I, I think that it actually is good for the investors because if we can take some of the stress out of uh, renting, and then it's good for the investor. You know, they want... Uh, uh, they want people who want to rent their properties, so if we can make that a little less stressful, then more people hopefully will be renting. I think the other thing is that the property investor would like to think that the tenant that's going into their property might be bonsure approved because of that extra credit check that we've done. Yeah. Uh, so, interesting. It's amazing how things change within real estate and you've got to open your eyes to uh, what the true picture yeah, is all, well, all about. Yeah, well, it's always an evolving uh, wheel, if you like, yeah. Now, obviously you said you've had thousands of people come along already, so are you going to be getting people like mortgage brokers saying, hey, well, we should <laughs> be doing some business or, uh, or bars aid or whatever else because you've got such a big database of um, people? I think over time we'll be developing a very big database. So, yes, uh, we've made that connection. Uh, and it would be nice if we can get the trust of that renter during his rental period. Every renter, I guess, is a potential first home buyer. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we could look at doing that ourselves or perhaps partnering with a credible lender and we can offer that service to our loyal customers. Yeah, that'd be Right, good. OK. Yeah. And what about the real estate industry? Because agents aren't always... They don't have the best reputation for liking change or doing no, extra well, work. Yeah. So uh, how are they taking That's it? That's why we intentionally made it so that they, they have to do as little work as possible. They've got enough on their plate. So we talk to them and we explain to them that this is very much tenant-driven. The tenant goes online, the tenant does it. All we need from them is to register with us. So if a tenant comes in and says, oh, I'm an estate agent, I want to use Bondshaw to pay my bond, all that's required is that they give us their trust account details. That's all that's required. Then they get the money, hand over the keys, and, uh, yeah. Right, okay. Now, obviously, with the insurance side of this, this is one thing that I hadn't th thought of before, because an average tenant can't really insure himself against getting the, the bond back. And so is this something that you've got to get the, the, uh, the rental bond or the bondshore thing to get the insurance, or could you take the insurance out as well? No, you can take um, either. So 
You can, in fact, we've got three products. We've got the loan funding, we've got the uh, rental bond insurance, that's the accidental damage and um, increased cost of cleaning, and then we've actually got a, a second insurance, which is contents insurance. Right. Two thirds of renters around Australia don't insure their contents. Yeah. So we've got that in there as well. But no, uh, if uh, you decide to pay your um, the bond up front, but you still want the insurance, as long as it's before the commencement of the tenancy, you can just take the insurance. The yeah. only thing we need is obviously at the beginning of that insurance we need to rely on the fact that there's been an inspection. Right. In due course we will probably uh, try to introduce it mid-term but it would be still dependent on that estate agent having made an inspection. Wonderful. Well uh, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks and a certainly lot. good to hear about uh, some new products. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Now,